Hello and welcome everybody to Lucy, the eternity she wished for. This is a visual novel I found on Steam, by pure chance by the way. It is created by a little Korean team that goes by the name of Modern Visual Arts Laboratory. Laboratory. Is that correctly pronounced? Big question mark. I, I looked it up on Google Translate how you pronounce that, but I actually forgot again. So, go me. Uh, yeah, as mentioned, this is a visual novel by an independent Korean uh, team developed. I had no idea that this was even in the making. Usually I try to be on top with uh, visual novels, especially independent visual novels that are crea being created, but I never heard of this. So, this was kind of a surprise when I uh, found this on Steam. I hope it will be good. Please go check it out on Steam if you like it and buy it. Always good to support visual novels so that in the future more visual novels can be produced. And now, without further ado, let's jump in. By the way, it is apparently a story set in the future about a boy finding a robot or something like that. The Three Laws of Robotics A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given it by the one p possessing control or ath authority, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Is that a real thing? Probably. October 12th, you. Modern Visual Arts Laboratory, ha 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 ha, I think it's correct, presents Scenario by SR I just want to close my eyes The thought enters my mind as I walk down the busy street All the brightly lit digital billboards and neon signs Covered from top to bottom with 3D holograms. That doesn't look all that freaky. <laughs> no, to be honest, actually that looks very freaky. God damn, I don't like 3D even these days. I hope it doesn't become a more of a thing in the future. But I guess it will. Covered from top to bottom with 3D holograms. Emitting various ear-splitting sound effects. They're all giving me a headache. I feel like I could collapse at any moment. This is the display of the IT superpower Korea. The constant and in-your-face technology underlines our nation's claim to fame. There have been many drastic and all-encompassing changes in the last few years. By the way, this has a, a Korean dub, at least for one, uh, at least I know for the robot that is going to appear in this novel. So, uh, there's also a Japanese dub, but I thought this is a Korean visual novel, so we'll use the Korean voice actors. I hope you're okay with that. There have been many drastic and all-encompassing encomp changes in the last few years. And being a person who cherishes nature, I despise these changes. That is why I just want to close my eyes. Yeah, I feel you, man. I'm not really a man of... of the nature, I'm more of a man of like a little city rather than the big cities, but sometimes stuff like this is really overwhelming. Blinking doesn't change anything. Everything appears even brighter than usual. I might just be feeling a little off. Maybe it's the weather. I decide to take a shortcut to avoid being overwhelmed. It's a place that will take me away from the blinding lights. I've chosen to take my secret path home. Programming Chaos, Character, CG, UI, Design, Defender. Whew! So you not, does not even have a name, huh? So it's like, actually me? Yeah, I can live with that. I finally breathe a sigh of relief after managing to escape the chaos of downtown. I half expect ghosts to pop out at, at me as I make my way through the shady park path. The buildings nearby are all filthy and worn down, with only a few inhabitants around. 
It seems that I haven't fully escaped all the noises from downtown. The industrial noises from factories and construction work continues to ring in the air. But that is fine. At least my eyes can take a rest. So our protagonist is actually really just you? Oh, that's an interesting choice. Well, that makes one think that it's probably not all that much about the protagonist. Or maybe it is. But then it's a, it's a weird choice to make a protagonist like a complicated character if it's just uh, if it, the protagonist is just called you and you are supposed to be the protagonist that usually means the protagonist is more like of a silent hero but on the other hand how does that work in visual novels i guess we shall see a massive building on the side catches my attention k robotics coal ltd that's probably what it would say on the main gates although i've never cared much about this place i've at least heard of it They've put out various models of robots, which are renow renowned, ah, renowned worldwide. I see them on the news quite often. My classmates are always talking about them. They are especially amazed about their androids. Personally, I don't know much about robots. In this generation, it's impossible to stay away from technology, whether I like it or not. Hey man, I don't own an iPhone or a smartphone, it is possible. <laughs> Not that I have anything against them. It's just basically, I'm so much on the internet, I like to be out of the internet at least when I'm not at home, you know, or, or at work, either or. I don't particularly care much about it, though. I'm the kind of person who prepares analog clocks over digital, pianos over synthesizers, acoustic guitars over electric, and finally, real people over androids. I turn my attention back to the sidewalk. I continue towards the hidden path leading to their junkyard. Naturally, this is private property, so no one is allowed to enter. But this is nothing for a troublemaker like me. You're hardcore. You're hardcore. You're hardcore. Oh, they even have... I don't know, now, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know how far this is supposed to be in the future. Probably not too far. I guess. Here it is. The graveyard for all their failed experiments. In the past, I've seen small tin can-like robots scurrying around and taking apart various objects. Only the more costly parts are recycled, while the cheaper ones are turned into scrap. Everything here is automated. There isn't anyone actually watching over the place. Just a guard robot and several worker robots silently carrying out their duties. If spotted by the guard robot, a siren is activated. I've personally never run into any trouble though. After all, robots are fundamentally stupid. Even with a guard robot, as long as I'm a bit careful, I can sneak by without issue. This is where that big company dumps all their stuff. I heard you can find some real goodies from time to time. Only if you're lucky, that is. Pretty sure that guy my, from my class told me something along those lines. I've already scoped this place out on previous trips. I've never had a good find, though. Guess it's just my luck. Or I can't tell what's useful or not. Probably the latter. Since my fami familiarity with robots is quite poor. Whatever. I didn't come here to hunt for treasures anyway. This is only a shortcut home. If I walk straight th through the middle, I can shave off almost 10 minutes. The reward outweighs the risk. Yeah, these 10 minutes. Most important 10 minutes of your life, probably. I'd go to jail for like 10 minutes of uh, a shorter way. Although I guess uh, going on someone's property doesn't get you into jail. On the other hand, who knows? <laughs> I don't know what future laws are like. Maybe this is some 1984 scenario. If only I could just ignore the loud noises and the no trespassing signs scattered all over the place, though. I have no reason to care about the piles of scrap around here. As usual, I quickly make my way through the junkyard. Huh? However... 
Today was a little different. Something had caught my eye. A faint figure in the distance. I can't be sure, but it looks like... A person? In a place like this? A woman? There appears to be an unconscious woman lying on the ground. She's not moving. Maybe she's hurt somewhere. Or something worse? I start to grow a bit concerned. Had I just stumbled upon a crime scene that might end up on tomorrow morning's headline news? I have to find out what's going on. I'm going in for a closer look. I dash towards the fallen maid to lend assistance. But wait. It appears that I was mistaken. It wasn't a woman that was lying on the ground after all. Ah, I was fooled. To be honest, if she doesn't, it wouldn't have like this number on her stomach, I'd think too she was a woman. On the other hand, that might be a kiss ass, a uh, kiss ass, god damn it, a kick ass <laughs> tattoo. Ah, uh, English, me very good at English. But something strikingly sim similar, two eyes closed tightly shut, sparkling silver hair. From afar you could mistake it for a person. Its features are almost lifelike. An android. That, was, that is what was lying there. Useless piece of junk. Don't scare me like that. I've never actually owned an android before. Though I've seen quite a few around me. They say that an android is nearly indistinguishable from a person from just a glance. That's how advanced our technology has become. To prevent confusion, androids are imprinted with serial codes. Each model has its own unique number. I spot the android's code located near its belly. I blow off the dust to get a better look. It reads PI PIM001 Number 1 With a design that I've never seen before. Maybe it's a prototype. Okay, I'm semi-sure that even a prototype that doesn't work isn't thrown in the junkyard. Or well, this is a really incompetent robot company. But maybe they had their reasons. It looks brand new. If so, then what is it doing here? Maybe this one, this was one of the failed experiments. It's caked with dust from head to toe. All in all, it's a pretty sad sight. It also hasn't moved a single inch. Looks like it's out cold. Hey, wake up. Curiosity gets the better of me. I decide to test it out. I do know that voice recognition is a standard feature for all androids nowadays. Assuming everything is working properly, it should respond to my voice. No response. Hey, say something. Still nothing. Come on. They're gonna, cut, they're gonna cut you open at this rate. I deliver a kick to the robot's leg. Oh, that is cool. Oh, that sounded creepy on the other hand. <laughs> Upon contact, it starts to show a sign of life. Accompanied by a collection of bleeps and bloops, the arms begin to spasm. Its movements are quite rigid. The scene looks like it was plucked straight off an old sci-fi film. It's probably running on reverse pow reserve power. <laughs> reverse power. I guess it's still got a bit of juice left. Its unstable movements start to make me feel a bit nervous. The light in its eyes have yet to return. I begin to spot a pattern in its actions. It looks as if it's greeting me with a wave, trying desperately to keep my attention. I glance around. I hear a screeching sound nearby. The sound of metal being crushed. It's probably those little robots doing their jobs. I can tell that they're close. They'll probably reach this place in less than 10 minutes. And shred this android into a million pieces. Its existence will soon come to an end. I kinda feel sorry for this thing. I begin to synthesize with the robot because I realized just how much trouble it was in. Despite being dusty, it's still in a pretty good shape. 
With a bit of a cleanup, it would look as good as new. If it hadn't been thrown out, it would surely still have been in service. Uh, excuse me. Oh. Wow, this is actually a cool text lock. <laughs> I wouldn't know what this... but I, No, if it hadn't been thrown out, it would surely still have been in service. Well, duh! What the hell is that sentence supposed to mean? <laughs> of course, if it wasn't thrown out, it would, would still be in there. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't know what this robot was made for, but I wonder why it never saw its debut. That is a good question, though. I mean, there has to be some kind of mistake inside her systems or something like that. Maybe the robot is evil. All of the labor used to create this robot will go to waste. All of the sweat and tears poured into creating this robot will go to dra down the drain. All of the cutting-edge features it could have offered will, ne will never be realized. And as far as I could see, with a little bit of tinkering, it just might become usable. Half of me is staring at the robot in pity, and the other half is calling me an idiot for doing so. It's not like I really needed an android in the first place anyway. I've never liked them. For me to actually keep one at home and use it, it's unthinkable, to say the least. And more importantly, I don't know how my father will react to this. I prefer classical music over rock, classical literature over pulp fiction, and finally, humans over androids. Let's face it, I have no use for an android. Eventually, this robot will be scrapped and recycled for new parts. It's just like how herbivores are eaten by carnivores for survival. Ah, okay. Things who eat meat and things who not eat meat. Good. Now me understand. Only the strongest survive. And that's the way it should be. I hate people who think like that. Can I say that like just for once? I know. I, I, I'm rambling a lot. I'm rambling a lot. I know that, but... God, I hate this way of thinking. Are you, what are you? A sheep and a wolf? God damn it, we are humans. We have the power. We have the power of the mind to overcome this instinctual thinking. God damn. What the fuck? Oh, you're the guard robot. Well, to be honest, just for the guarding purposes, you have a quite fancy outfit. Alert! Intruder detected! Damn it, I've been spotted by that guard robot. The most troublesome one. If I hesitate any longer, I'll be caught and taken away. I gotta go! See ya! With those cold words, I make my way out of the junkyard. Is he for real? Did he let her lying there now? This is actually, this is a topic that is, uh, that, you know, we, we people have to face in the future a lot. Like, what is life and what isn't life? I mean, I know this, this question uh, was handled in a lot of uh, literature, philosophically and, you know, uh, in, in novels and TV series. One of my favorite TV series examples actually is uh, in Star Trek The Next Generation, when, uh, I don't know if you know the series, I mean, you at least know it probably, but I don't know if you've watched it, but I lo loved the scene when uh, Captain Picard defended uh, Data. You probably know the scene if you have watched Star Trek. Anyway, these are questions we have to ask ourselves. When does life start? When do we have to uh, protect life, etc.? And uh, seeing something that is so human-like and just letting it lie down there to to die... I don't know, that's, that's like a kind of cold reaction. On the other hand, he is used to androids. He knows androids. So, um... If you're used to them and you know they're not human-like, I guess it's easier to do that. Maybe? Ah, <sighs> there must be something wrong with me. Ah! 
Ah, you're a good boy. <laughs> you're a good boy. Me. <laughs> you, you are a good boy. I don't know, it throws me off. The, the protagonist should have a name. I really think the protagonist needs a name. Even while taking a great risk, I ended up bringing the android home. It's always been a bad habit of mine to act on a whim. I'm already starting to regret it. But I decide to take some time to clean the robot anyway. I'm really surprised though. It looks practically brand new now. I was nervous about cleaning it at first, because I thought using water might ruin its chases. But then again, I would have probably just thrown it away if it broke down anyway. It doesn't look like there are any glaring issues for now. It seems like I've made the right choice of bringing it home. And besides, it wouldn't make sense for such a premium model to be not waterproof. That's not the only problem here though. I can't figure out how to communicate with this thing. Hey, you. It arms begin to flail. Show me a trick. Come on, anything? If you don't want to be thrown away again, just show me something. Don't tell me moving your arms is all you can do. If you don't say anything soon, I'm seriously gonna toss you out. Ugh. I let out an exasperated cry. This was no better than talking to a brick wall. This is why I hate machines. They're stupid. Especially the one in front of me, which in particular seemed to be a million times dumber than the others. I'm starting to get a little ticked off. Why did I even bother with this thing? Don't do something you might regret. This old saying has never been wrong. Well, if you say so. Now that I think about it, it's probably operating under reser reserve power. Maybe it just needs a recharge. That might do the trick. I start to get up, but only to pause thereafter. There is another issue. Hey, where am I supposed to plug this cord into? I've never used an android before, so obviously I wouldn't know. Maybe your nose. Was that a yes? Maybe it was just my imagination, but its arms seem to flail more rapidly. Perhaps it's trying to tell me that I'm wrong. I imagine the android with an electric cord up its nose. Huh. It will be quite a sight. Ah. Um. Ah, there we go. We can save. Alrighty. And, uh, yeah. I feel like I'm mean today. Yeah, I feel like I'm mean today. So we will do a cliffhanger. And for once, for once in my life, it's actually a mean cliffhanger. Because usually, I usually talk my mind when I do decisions. And then I say, next episode, we're gonna do this decision. But I basically already told you what I'm gonna do. This time, it's different. This time, I'm actually evil. Yay, evil. Huh, but this is actually, I gotta say, uh, when I first read the description of the game, I thought it sounded very similar to uh, Planetarian, The Reverie of a Little Planet, you know, the key visual novel. If you have ever read that or heard of that. Um, but at least the scenario seems to be different. This is just normal society, while in Planetarian it was a dystopian future, you know. And I always, I always like uh, games who ask some kind of philosophical questions, you know. Or not games in particular, but stories in general. And uh, it seems like this is one of these games that will ask, you know, the, the, the questions. What is a human? What, where, where, where are the borders to that, you know? When does a machine become a human? And stuff like that. And I always like... Uh, these kinds of questions, and I'm interested in where the game will go with that. Now, obviously, the, the design of the robot is a bit ridiculous, like... We could have done a bit less anime girl, in my opinion. But on the other hand, we don't know who this robot was made for. Maybe it's some kind of... Oh, actually... Actually, let me take that back. I kind of remember now having read that, but I won't spoiler you. So, uh... I'm gonna end it here, because it was, I think it was in the game's description, but if you haven't read that, I don't want to spoiler you. 
So, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you're finding this game interesting as well. And uh, if you do, please, as mentioned, check it out on Steam. Always good to uh, support visual novels. And um, yeah, I hope you come back for the next part. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.